Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's live stream. My name is Faiza from the London School of English. Um, thank you so much for joining us for today's session. Uh, we're very excited to welcome one of our expert trainers, Linda, um, who will be delivering today's session. Uh, and the topic is a little bit long, so bear with me as I go through all of it. So we'll be looking at business English, vocabulary and expressions for business and career coaching. Um, it's an interesting topic, uh, quite relevant to people from different um, professions, particularly kind of in the HR space. Um, but we hope you'll find some useful expressions and vocabulary that can help you along the way. Um, it's uh, great for you to be able to join us. If there are any questions that you have for us, um, please feel free to type that into the chat section. Uh, we'll be answering any questions at the end of today's session. Um, just to test it out, let's ask our audience, what country and city are you joining us from? Feel free to type that to us. If you have any questions at all after the session, um, then you can contact us at clients at londonschool.com. We'll take some time towards the end to share with you some information about our different courses. And you can always visit our website at londonschool.com um, to find out more information. So without further ado, I will hand you over to Linda, who will take care of you during the session. Over to you, Thanks Linda. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Faiza. Well, I think what we should do is we should start um, the session with the basic definition uh, of what a business coach uh, is. Well, according to Google anyway. Um, so a business coach will assist and guide the business owner in running a business by helping them clarify the vision of their business and how it fits in with their personal goals. Business coaching is a process used to take a business from where it is now to where the business owner wants it uh, to be. So just to give you that definition again, so a business coach will assist and guide the business owner in running a business by helping them clarify the vision of their business and how it fits in with their personal goals. It's also business coaching is a process used to take a business from where it is now to where the business owner wants it uh, to be. Would you add anything else to this uh, definition? So I just want to welcome uh, Akut uh, Devanko and Diana or Diana, hello and welcome uh, to you all. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this session. And also just to say, if you haven't been able to join us live and you're watching this recorded uh, once it's uploaded, just to say welcome to you um, as well. So moving on, I think the first thing we need to look at uh, is this commonly used uh, coaching acronym. So some people use it as GROW, Personally, I prefer the H on the end, the TH on the end, growth, um, because it just has a little bit more to it. So a growth or grow um, coaching model um, or approach, this is what the, the acronym is used for. So it's a coaching model uh, or approach. Um, does anybody know what the acronym stands for? So G for what, R for what, O for what? W for what, T and H. These acronyms are incredibly useful and knowing what they mean also will help you um, a lot. So before I give uh, the acronym to you, I just wanted to say that at the top of the list um, must stand trust, building trust uh, with whoever it is that you're coaching, be it um, an individual in an HR position or whether it's um, within an organization uh, to, a, to a, a CEO or externally to a company, uh, et cetera. So let's take a look at what these individual uh, words uh, mean, letters mean from this acronym GROWTH. So this is what it looks like. 
So remember, right at the top, we've got building trust. G is to focus on goals. R is about reality. O is about options. W is for will. T is for tactics. And H um, is for habits. So how does this tool help you? And do you use it? So if you do use this kind of tool, would you mind just saying, yes, I do, or no, I don't, or I use something else? Uh, it would be great if you could uh, type your comments uh, in the comment box. So how do you use this tool to help you? Um, and uh, perhaps you use something else. More people have joined us. So just to welcome Charo from Madrid. Uh, welcome, and also Uriel from Mexico. Um, so nice to see you all uh, joining us and taking the time to get involved uh, in our live stream. So we want to find out, well, how does this tool help people, this acronym tool? How does it help people uh, to um, in a coaching situation? So I think the key, there's a quite a lot, but I narrowed it down and I would say that the tool helps people to do their best, definitely to make better decisions, to solve problems, holding them back. This can often be an issue, especially in an HR situation. You've got a good staff member, they've got problems which are sort of um, stopping them from achieving their best. And of course, these problems can hold them back from doing their best. Um, learning new skills, so to learn new skills and also to progress people's careers because of course one of the roles of a, a coach or an HR person is to develop people's abilities and skills and make sure that the organization or um, as an individual you make sure that you motivate people to do their absolute best always. But um, we've got all of these um, uh, words that match the acronym. But you're probably asking, how, how do we use it? Well, by using the tool together with questions, uh, you could very beautifully work this and use it as a sort of a, a, a chart, really, that you could go through these kind of questions when you're in a situation where you're either HR or any kind of managerial position um, or uh, as the topic is with coaching. So let's have a look at some of the questions that you might use which it, with each of these individual uh, letters in the acronym. So the first one we wanted to look at is the goals. So goals, I think the uh, important question to ask is what do you need to achieve? What do you need to achieve? So it's quite a nice, it's a direct question, but it's not in your face. It's kind of getting to the point, but soft. And what do you need uh, to achieve in terms of your goals? I think the next one, which is quite important, especially with uh, the fact that the last year has turned our, all of our lives a little bit upside down and topsy-turvy. So I think the most important part is you're going to be asking, what's the reality? In other words, what is happening now? What's going on? And how could we help in with what is happening now, the reality of the situation at the moment? Then we move on to the next letter of the acronym, which is O. And it's about options. And I think this is an important one because what you're asking is what could you do? Remember that as a coach, you're not giving people advice. That's not the role of a coach. But what you're asking, you're asking relevant questions so that you get the other person to start thinking about how they could solve their situation. Yeah, it's much better if people come up with solutions themselves. So I think what you're going to be asking is, what could you do in this situation with these options? What could you do? I think that's the question you want to be asking uh, in order to get to some of these um, solutions. Then the next letter uh, that we're looking at is W for will. And I think the question that we definitely need to ask when we get to this uh, this letter, W, is what will you do? 
uh, you know, we're putting the ball in the other person's court to find out what they're thinking. You know, what will you do with this current situation, with this reality? How are you going to move the situation forward? And then we'll definitely naturally move on to the letter T, which is tactics. And I think the question we're wanting to be asking here is how and when will you do it? So creating some kind of timeline. So first of all, how? What is the, what is the strategy? Um, what is the tactic? How are you going to go about doing this particular, uh, making this particular change or solving this particular problem? And then putting a timeline on it. When are you going to do it? Good. And then I think the last acronym, the last letter in the acronym is H. And it's about habits. And it's how will you sustain the success? So once you've come up with solutions, tactics, and options, and looked at the reality and your goals and everything, how are you going to continue to do these things? Um, and as this uh, lovely picture says, is are you going to eliminate your old habits that blocked you from moving forward? And are you going to introduce new habits, new ways of doing things or new ways of thinking in order to um, get into a better place uh, and uh, be able to feel like you're moving forward in a good direction? So asking these questions helps the coaching conversation progress towards clear actions uh, and outcomes. And after all, that's all what we what we all want. We want to move forward with clear um, clear outcomes so that we feel like we're on the right track. Good. Now we're going to move on to looking at um, some useful vocabulary. We're going to look at five phrasal verbs because phrasal verbs are extremely important. Uh, in British English, we use them a lot. We have a phrasal verb dictionary. That's how important they are. And we're going to look at five sentences. So first of all, I'm going to give you five phrasal verbs. And then I'm going to give you five sentences. And you need to choose which phrasal verb goes into the gap in the sentence. So if you want to, you can type in your answers. So for instance, you might put number one, then put the phrasal verb. Uh, that'll be great. Uh, so this is an interactive uh, session. If you're watching this on a recorded, um, once it's recorded, maybe you want to um, pause the video, write down your answer, and then you can check your answer later just to see whether you got the correct answer or not. So here we go. Here are the five uh, phrasal verbs that we're going to look at. So the first one is to come up with, to set up, to go on, and to work on and to find out. So these are the five, come up with, set up, go on, work on, and five are, find out. These are the five uh, phrasal ver verbs that we're going to look at. So we're going to look at the five sentences that you will need to use these five phrasal verbs in. So the first one. I'm just gonna join it, you here, Linda, for the quiz part. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, um, great, perfect. So the first one is you have to bum, bum, producing the right cultures within organizations. So which of these phrasal verbs are you going to use? Is it come up with? Is it set up? Is it go on? Is it work on? Or is it find out? Type your answers, type away. Let's find out if who, if anybody could get it right. So you have to mm -mm, producing the right cultures within organizations. So sometimes uh, you might be typing your answer, but sometimes it takes a little bit of time for us to see it, for it to upload. So don't feel frustrated if you have typed your answer and uh, we haven't seen it yet. Camille has, uh, Camille has typed something. Set up. Mm. You have to set up producing the right cultures. Let's see. Mm. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Set up. Come. Ah, oh, well done. I could. No. Oh, no. Sorry. I read that incorrectly. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -mm. <laughs> 
Um, so we've got set up, set up, and ah, Diana. Uh, and you know what I love about Diana? So organized. She's put their one work on. Very organized. Fantastic. Yes. Excellent, Diana. Uh, that is the correct answer. So you have to work on producing the right cultures within organizations. Thank you to um, all the others that uh, typed in. And don't be despondent if your answer isn't correct, because remember that we learn from making mistakes. And so to be brave enough to type, even though you it's not correct, well done on you. This is how we learn, because you'll never forget this now. Good. Let's move on to number two. So HR people constantly have to bum, 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 fresh insights into performance management. So is it come up with? Is it set up? Is it go on? Is it work on or is it found find out? So HR people constantly have to pum 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 fresh insights into performance management. Which of these phrasal verbs are we going to use? Uriel, fantastic. Congratulations. You got that. And Diana, so organized once again. Put the number two, come up with very clear, very easy, but you're all well done. You got in there first. Excellent. Fast fingers on the uh, keypad or the, um, the keyboard. And the answer is come up with. So HR people constantly have to come up with fresh insights into performance management. Well done to the two of you and anybody else who might have uh, typed your answer in. Okay, great. Let's have a look at number three. So in redundancy situations, you have to let the workforce know what's bum bum and kill the rumors. Absolutely. So in redundancy situations, you have to let the workforce know what's bum bum and kill the rumors. Which of those phrasal verbs are you going to use? So in redundancy situations, you have to let the workforce know what bum bum and kill the rumors. Again, sorry to repeat myself, but I don't want you to be disheartened if you have typed your answer in and I haven't seen it because uh, it takes a bit of time uh, to upload. You will again. Poo, well done. Well done. Excellent. Yeah, well done. Uh, and Akut, you also got that right. Well done. Excellent. Fantastic. So in redundancy situations, you have to let the workforce uh, know what's going on and kill the rumors. And then, of course, this is so critical at the moment with so many changes going on, redundancies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's always a good idea to let the workforce know what's going on and kill any kind of rumors um, that could have a negative impact uh, on your organization. Uh, Diana, you also got it right, but you got it in a little bit late, but yes, congratulations to all of you. All right, number four, you might help pum -pum, new officers, in-house training programs, and chat forums. So you might help pum -pum, new officers, in-house training programs, and chat forums. Which of those phrasal verbs do you think fits quite nicely in there? So I'll give you a moment. Charo, well done. <laughs> Set up, well done, Charo. Excellent, fantastic, and so quick as well. Well done to you. And uh, Motivational Metro, fantastic name. <laughs> Um, well done to you as well uh, and uh, to anybody else uh, who answered. Devanko, excellent. So let's have a look at the answer again. So you might help set up new offices, in-house training programs and chat forums. Excellent. Fantastic. Right. We're going to move on to number five. You are... Mm -mm, not only about what managers and employees think, 
but also mm, mm, why people are unhappy and not performing well. Which of those phrasal verbs fits into, it's one phrasal verb that fits into both of those gaps. So you are mm -mm, not only about what managers and employees think, but also mm -mm, why people are unhappy and not performing well. So, Charo, you got it, except that, remember, we had to use it in the continuous. So you are finding out not only what managers and employees think, but also finding out why people are unhappy and not performing well. So well done, Charo, but except that it needed to be in the ING. So finding out, you are finding out not only what managers and employees think, but also finding out why people are unhappy and not performing well. Excellent. Thank you so much for your participation. It really does uh, mean a lot uh, to have people engage and uh, having something a little bit more uh, interactive. Good. So we've got some more vocabulary. And this time, what we're going to do, so pay attention because we're going to do a matching activity. So the first one is to match the number with the letter. And in a moment, I think Faisal will be very kind yep. to display something for us. So we're going to have six uh, items of vocabulary. So on the left, we've got number one, a sticking point. Number two, to drag your feet. Sometimes people say to drag your heels but I've decided to keep feet, but you might hear heels. The third one is to see eye to eye, to resolve, to take issue with someone, and the sixth one, to split hairs. On the other side, we've got definitions. They do not match, and you need to find the right number to match the right letter. So find an agreement a major point of disagreement, an area of strong agreement, to argue over a minor point, to do something slowly or be unwilling to do something, to agree with someone. So these don't match in order. So for instance, one might match E, one might, might match D. You have to find which of the uh, points of vocabulary match correctly to the letter on the other side uh, of the screen. So I'll give you a few moments. Uh, it might take you a bit of time. You, um, perhaps what you want to do is just type one number at a, at a time. So uh, if you find the definition for number one, just type one, whatever you think it is, what letter it matches. Then you can move on to number two and type the letter that you think it matches. I hope none of you are using the dictionaries because that's that would be kind of cheating, really, wouldn't it? So try and just quickly what don't spend too much time thinking about it. Just naturally, what's your first answer? Because remember, that's how you learn. If you get it wrong, then you know immediately that uh you know, you you didn't understand it, and this is the way that we remember. The more we just spontaneously do things, and then we see where we where we made a mistake. This is how we remember. Yeah, do not be afraid to um, make a mistake. It's how we learn when we are studying a language. Yeah, we can't be perfect all the time. Not just with language, actually. So, um. Let's move on and have a look at the answers. So, A, could you put there one C, so a sticking point, an area of strong disagreement. It could be, mm, yes, it could fit, but I had actually had it matched with B. So, one B, a major point of disagreement. I think there's come some similarity between the two. So yeah. in a way, I would probably say we could allow that. Oh, yeah, I was just about to say, I think it's the 
the nuance sometimes of like yeah. if if it is a sticking point depending on how sticky <laughs> it is. <laughs> it could be yes. a major point or it could be an area yes. of strong. So yeah, I think yes. both could work. Absolutely. So um yes, yeah, so, uh, we could say one 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 B and one C. So I think uh, everyone's got that right. So A could Uriel, yes, absolutely A could four four A. No, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, hang on. We're going all skew. I think I'm let me okay, get back on go. track. <laughs> yeah, let's go back to two. <laughs> yes. Okay, number two. So what's the answer for number two? So number two, to drag your feet is E. So to drag your feet is E, to do something slowly uh, or be unwilling uh, to do something. I think that's the absolute correct answer is to do something slowly or be unwilling to do something. So we, some people say use the expression to drag your heels, uh, but the, um, generally the most common, I think, do you, would you agree, Pfizer, to drag your feet is probably more common than to drag your heels? I think so. Um, mm. I think, you know, it obviously comes from the literal that if you are yes. dragging your feet and going you're going slowly because you're yes, not moving a, as fast as you think as of a horror can. movie actually yeah. <laughs> um, okay yeah, and this is sometimes i think you know when you're trying to find the definitions often it could be literal so you, you know yes. what does what happens when you drag your feet you're slower than if you were exactly. not to drag them so that's where yes you can and also you kind of unwilling you know if we think mm -hmm. of a young kid dragging their feet as they're walking and they're going to wherever they're going and they don't want to be going. Yeah. You know, generally you get the feeling that um, the person doesn't want to be doing that. Right. So as yep. you say, sometimes you can get a visual image and it kind of matches the definition. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Number three, uh, this is a good one. So number three to see eye to eye. So remember we can use it in a positive way see eye to eye but also it can be in a negative and it's to disagree to agree with someone so if you see eye to eye with someone it means that you agree with someone in a moment we're going to look at some sentences where we use these so don't panic if you're still a little bit unclear we'll correct provide a little bit more clarity later on so to see eye to eye is to agree with someone um, then what have we got next? We've got uh, number four, to resolve. Uh, and if you're looking for uh, to resolve, then basically you're looking to find an agreement. So it matches with A. So to resolve uh, is A. And I think, A, could you did write that in uh, already ages ago. So uh, you realized very soon that your uh, knowledge of that was, was there. Well done, yes. So to resolve... Uh, is A, to find an agreement. Uh, number five, to take issue with someone matches with C. And uh, this means that you have a, an area of strong disagreement. Yeah, you take issue with someone. Good. And then the last one, to split hairs, matches with D. And it's to argue, uh, argue, <coughs> oh, excuse me, to argue over a very minor point yeah you split hairs to split hairs to argue over a very minor point great thank you so much for participating so now i think what we're going to do is we're going to look at a few examples uh of how you might use uh this uh these new expressions in a sentence so let's have a look at the first one we're going to look at to see eye to eye or not to see eye to eye with someone. So two example sentences, though they work as a team, they often don't see eye to eye on most issues. Yeah. So they work, though they work as a team, they often don't see eye to eye. So they don't agree. Yes. He is looking for a new job as he does not see uh, eye to eye with his manager. So we could obviously also use it in a positive way. Um, I enjoy working with this group because we see eye to eye, meaning that you agree. And um, yeah, let's have a look at the next one. So to drag your feet, um, I've asked my boss to give me a raise, but he keeps dragging his feet. 
not something we want uh, when you're asking for a raise. And that means that uh, the person is delaying or unwilling. So our clients are dragging their feet and still haven't signed the contract. So doing something slowly or could be unwilling uh, or playing for time, as people say. Then uh, the third one that we looked at was to split hairs. Um, and the two example sentences, I think it was your responsibility, not John's, but let's not split, split hairs about it. And what it means is let's not argue over something so minor uh, when we've got much bigger things to focus on. And then the second example, if we continue to split hairs, we'll never get this project started. So again, it's about um, arguing over minor points when actually we need to focus on the big picture and get moving. Um, then we're going to look at the um, to take issue. Uh, so why didn't you take issue with this earlier when we could have addressed the matter? Did anyone take issue with the proposal? So, of course, this is a strong area of disagreement. Good. Uh, let's move um, to the sticking point. Uh, it's a commonly used uh, expression. Many people use it all the time, actually. Um, and here are two, ex two example sentences. The length of the contract has become a sticking point uh, in the negotiations. And the main sticking point was salary. So the sticking point is obviously areas where you disagree or there is major a major point uh, where you might disagree. So here, the length of the contract and the salary were the two main sticking points where they couldn't uh, reach an agreement. And then the final one that we, we are looking at is to resolve. And so they agreed to focus on so we always use that preposition after the verb focus. So to focus on resolving the issue. And I was hoping we could resolve this issue. So to find a solution and to find a, or reach agreement. I think that's uh, the key thing. So that's all as far as those phrasal verbs are concerned. But I think finally a few other things uh, that we need to think about. So... For sure, coaches and HR individuals spend most of their time communicating with people uh, in their organizations. And very often when you're working solely in your organization, we use the word in-house. It's got nothing to do with your home, but what you're saying is that it's within the organization. So often the language that is used, because it's in-house within the organization, often the language used is more neutral. So that's why uh, I think you might want to consider using these power verbs that I've put together for you, power verbs and expressions, to get your point across more effectively uh, and quickly. So let's have a look at some power verbs and expressions. So on the left, we've got uh, investigate. That's the verb investigation is the noun and we can look at these two sentences and we can see that using the verb creates much more power so we are going to investigate the matter we are going to do an investigation that's also fine there's nothing wrong with that but remember if you're wanting to be much more powerful much more uh getting your message across much more quickly we just want to stick with these power verbs we're going to investigate the matter sounds much more um powerful okay let's have a look at the next power verb and we've got on the left we've got the verb discover and the word discovery is a noun the first one it took the team several weeks to discover the reason behind the drop in sales. 
Then we use in it as a noun, the discovery of the reason behind the drop in sales took the team ah, several weeks to find. So we can see that when you need to communicate a point quickly and accurately and get your message across without too much fuff, then we want to use these power verbs and we can, I'm sure we'll all agree that the first one does this much more effectively. Good. Um, let's have a look at the uh, the next power verb, and it's perform or performance. So perform is the verb, performance is the noun, and we can see here she performs well under pressure. Her performance went when under pressure is good. We can see that they're both correct, but using the power verb gets right to the point, says quickly and sweetly uh, what, exactly what we mean, and we can communicate in a much faster, quicker way and get that message across using these power verbs rather than relying on these nouns. But of course, both sentences are accurate and we could use the noun. So if you're more comfortable using the noun, that's fine. But if you want to be more effective, then we want to go with those power verbs. Here are a few other expressions to consider that uh, give you a little bit more um, powerful communication, especially if it's in-house. Remember, just be aware of using them outside uh, of your organization or your team because it might come across as a little bit more direct. But here they are. So the first one is, instead of saying, on receipt of your documents, we could just say, when you get the document or uh, when we get the document, that's what we'll do. So we can see that using this formal on receipt of uh, kind of makes everything a little bit clunky, whereas we say, when you get the documents, email me, or when we get the documents, we'll email you. So it's just much more powerful and uh, communicates much more specific information. Uh, the next one that we're looking at is on request. So on request of this, then we'll do this, which is fine in a formal situation, but because we're looking at much more neutral language, it's better to say, if you ask for, we'll look at this. Or if you ask for this next week, this is what we're going uh, to do. Good. The next one is particulars. So we might say, if you give us the particulars, we'll uh, look into it. Uh, it's much better to say, give it, uh, if you give us the details or give us the details and we'll investigate or something like that. Um, some more people have joined. So Ali from Somalia and Miriam from Turkey, uh, just saying hi to everybody. Um, thank you so much uh, for taking the time uh, to join us and to participate. Um, the next one is terminate. Uh, and we can use end. Yeah, so when your contract terminates, when your contract ends, much quicker, much easier, and uh, a little bit more uh, friendly and less formal. Good. Uh, and then the next one is prior to. So prior to you joining this organization, much better to say before you joined this organization, this is what we were doing, or this is what I was doing, or whatever it is. Uh, then the next one is additional. Um, instead of using the word additional, just use extra. It's much easier, much quicker. But remember again, just a reminder that uh, I'm talking about using extra in a more neutral situation. Of course, if you're uh, communicating in a much more formal uh, situation, you might need to work, use the word additional. And in the same way, if you're communicating in a more formal way via email, then you would use additional. But if it's in-house, you're just working with your team, just use the simple power language, extra instead of additional, um, especially because you use in English, might be much quicker and easier to use these quick and easy words that people generally probably would have a better um, understanding of. Then this word consequently, uh, probably just better to say, so that's the reason why we're doing that, or that's why this is going to happen. Uh, the next one is in excess of, so uh, more than, much better. 
uh, instead of this clunky, complicated, uh, the uh, project was in excess of, the project cost us more than, much easier language to use within your team. But again, reserving this kind of in excess of more formal language uh, for uh, people outside of your team or outside of your organization where you might be required to speak or communicate much more formally. Uh, we've got about three or four more. So in the event of if uh, ahead of schedule was the next one. Um, so uh, we are ahead of schedule. We are early with this booking or whatever it is. So uh, then face up to, we need to face up to uh, the reality, one of the acronym letters used in the growth thing. So face up to, why don't we just use face? We need to face this situation. And then finally, worst ever, uh, we could just say it's the worst. Much easier and clearer to understand. And lastly, uh, at the present time, very clunky, uh, very you know, uh, formal, just communicate and say, now, this is what we're doing now. And uh, again, just a reminder about this formal neutral. So finally, I'd like to leave you with uh, a little quote, which I think uh, sums up our session and life in general quite well. So to effectively communicate, we must realize that we are all different in the way we perceive the world and use this understanding as a guide to our communication with others. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening. Over to you, Pfizer. Thank you so much, Linda, um, for a great session. I think there are a lot of um, words, phrases, vocabulary and concepts here that I, I know our students will find very helpful. Um, Actually, you know, when we when we started the conversation, this is language you said that, for example, HR professionals would use or career coaches would use. But I think we're finding kind of, as you've also noted, you know, more and more that this can be used in day to day if you're managing a team, um, if you're working together as part of a team as well. Um, a lot of this language can help you to kind of communicate better. Would you would you agree? Like, how are you finding it in terms of the, the client? Yes, absolutely. I think, yeah, I think, you know, that um, we can't sort of pretend that life's all rosy and, you know, normal because it's not, right? And we don't want to harp too much on the negative um, because the reality is we know what we, you know, what we are having to cope with and there's lots of change, there's lots of uncertainty. So I think what I am finding a lot with students is that they're saying that, there's much, much more of a need to find, uh, to use these kind of coaching tools um, on a day-to-day -day level. So, you know, as a manager needing to deal with, you know, um, staff who, or employees who, you know, feeling the strain of COVID, lockdown, quarantine, working from home, screen time, all of these kind of things. So I think, um you know, it's not just HR people or business coaches that are having to ask these kind of questions. And I think the 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 tools, you know, the 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 letters in the uh, in the acronym and then the questions are quite key because you know if we go back and 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 look at them, we're talking about um, goals, we're looking at reality, we're looking at you know options, will, etc. Uh, etc. Et and I think that. You know, this is so current at this moment in time. And if we look at the questions as well, you know, what do you need to achieve? How can we help you in your role? You know, how can we make your screen time uh, easier or less? So I think, you know, it's not just about coaching. It's HR. It's, I think, anybody really, even, you know, uh, within teams, people yeah. are supporting each other and talking. So, yeah, I, I think it's... I'd also say, like, for example, you know, O is all about options. And so much of our day-to-day -day reality is being impacted by the options we have, depending on the situation that we might be in. So I think historically for businesses, this might um, kind of, there's a reason I think the acronym is growth. And, and generally, Absolutely. you might have to come across these things when you're in a period of growth where for businesses, you know, they'd 
act in a certain way or they'd work in a certain way and not have to change it so much. But I think yeah. what's happened over the last 18 months is so many businesses have had to constantly change and constantly evolve. So that's also Absolutely. that kind of point that we've seen um, with our clients as well, that, you know, they've come to join us on courses and it's because they suddenly have a need that they didn't have before Absolutely. because there's been a tremendous amount of change. And yeah. I think I'll use this, this opportunity also to share about the different courses that we have. So, um, for, for business professionals, we've got our face-to-face -face courses in London that's open here at our center in Holland Park. Um, we're also offering that virtually. And then, um, as Linda mentioned, you know, a lot of this language would be relevant to people who would take our English for Human Resources course um, for professionals so that, you know, we're giving them the language that they need to do the, the business coaching and the career coaching as well. Um, and then... <laughs> Similarly, we also have English for specific courses if you work in different industries and different sectors. So, um, you know, we're we're trying also our best to provide a multitude of options to support our clients, uh, whether they are able to, to learn English with us here in London or whether they'd like to join us online. And you can find a lot of that information on our website at londonschool.com. And then if you obviously have any questions for us as well, um, you can contact us at clients at londonschool.com. So let's just check to see if we have any questions in the chat. We don't yet, but if you guys can have I just, anything. Can I just add something? Because mm -hmm. it's, it's been quite fascinating. I know um, London School offers this, um, I can't remember the exact name of the, I think it's a sort of a quarantine package. Yep. Yeah. So I've, had, I've taught a couple of students who've on the, been on the okay. quarantine package, yep. and it's been yeah. so great, you know, because they've come from uh, various countries mm -hmm. and they stay, they're staying in, I think the one chap was staying in one of the school's um, uh, Resident. organized residences yeah. and the other chap was staying with the host family. Mm -hmm. yep. And um, both of them said they felt so comfortable and it was so great because oh. the one guy, actually he took his laptop and he showed the group around his room and he was so happy yeah, yeah. and he said, look, I've got everything. I've got a kitchen, I've got a, yeah. a bathroom, I've got my bed, I've got everything I need. I can order online from various people if I want food. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other guy was saying that the host family was great. They were treating yeah. him so well and bringing him his food uh, to the door and he was standing at the door, closed door, yeah. obviously, mm -hmm. having a chat with them. Um, yeah. And then they were so excited because they were in London yeah. uh, and then they were going to be moving to the um, to the classes afterwards. And I just thought yeah. that was such a fantastic uh, thing that the school is offering. Yeah, so you can find more information on that on our website, but we're basically offering this quarantine package that um, – when you have your first week of courses, because you'll be in quarantine, um, we will provide you with a free course and accommodation. And exactly as Linda said, the, the purpose of this is also you'll get to know your classmates. So you'll join them online for the week that you'll have to be in, in quarantine or isolation. And then if you opt um, for the test to release scheme, then after five days, your second uh, and your test is negative, then you will come into the classroom and you'll know all your classmates because before you were on the screen and then now um, you'll be able to come see them face to face. But uh, yeah. yeah, we've we've been very lucky that we've had lots of clients from different parts of the world and they've had a, a smooth process. Um, it's been as incredible. Linda mentioned, we have um, basically the option to stay in a residence or to stay with the family. And many of our hosts are very comfortable and familiar with, you know, hosting students in that kind of situation. And they've and I thought that was great, you know, having that option of either in the residence or with a host family, you know, and what you feel the most comfortable with. Exactly. You know, so um, I think it's great. Absolutely Excellent. great. If you, yeah. if you have anybody who's watching, if you have any questions about that, then please feel free to email us at clients at London School. Um, so we, we do have one question here from Chela. And the question is the HR term back out. Can you explain? Well, you know, the thing is, there's got to be some kind of context. Um, I think probably back out, if I just think back out as two separate words as opposed mm -hmm. to one, that's the first thing. I think if you back out of something, uh, you kind of change your mind about yeah. what you want to do. Um, we also use it, I think Amer in America, they use it when you're reversing your yeah. car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you back out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you back out of the garage, yep. Yes. Or your parking but, spot. 
Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So I think what what it, what we could say is it's reversing. So yeah. reversing your decision or changing your mind, yeah, uh, about something. So it could be that perhaps maybe you have a contract, you're going to give someone a contract, and yeah. perhaps the organization decides to back out of uh, the agreement because perhaps you found out something that doesn't work, or perhaps the person that you have employed decides to back out, meaning to reverse, to change their mind about what they want to do. Yeah. Um, we have a question here from... I believe yes, there will be a new classification. Class yes. And I think that might be happening live before our very eyes. So because yes. we've been focused on the live stream, I have no idea. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, once we get those updates, um, then that, that obviously helps the situation depending on whether you need to do uh, a full quarantine or a partial quarantine or what what your circumstances but, uh, if i remember correctly um i could said that he was in london i can't remember is he from from turkey um uh, he's in istanbul at the moment uh, okay hi from istanbul okay <laughs> okay well hopefully uh hopefully we can uh, get to a point where you know eventually one day we can just have everybody back because yeah. i must say i do Oh, thank you, Akit, from Turkey. Yes, um, we, we also have our fingers crossed, too. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. I'm sure you are laughing with me, too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't think we have uh, any other questions, but I guess there's just one point and a sort of a question to, to end on. I'm... You know, a lot of these concepts you talk about in business coaching can be quite sensitive, I guess, because you know, you're, you're probing and you're asking questions that are, you know, why are you doing it this way? Or could you possibly look at it another way? Um, what would you say about like, you know, being mindful of the type of language you use? What are some of the things that people should consider when they're choosing? And, and also, you know, towards the end, when you were giving those different examples of like, if you want to be more formal or informal or direct or direct. So what are some con considerations? Um, I think that uh, definitely modal verbs really help uh, help to sort of soften uh, sort of expressions. So instead of saying, um, uh, what are you going to do? Uh, you might want to say, um, have you considered or have you thought about or what uh, what are you thinking about or what might what you... you yeah. Exactly. What might what might your approach be? Mm -hmm. So, um, or you know, we'll help you. What we may be able to help you. We might be able to help you. So, also things like um, using softeners, like for instance, unfortunately, when you want to break bad news, instead of just saying we can't help you, mm -hmm. uh, it's really useful to use these softeners to prepare people. So, if I start saying unfortunately naturally you're going to start preparing okay here comes bad news unfortunately we're not in a position to help you um so i think these kind of um softening language is really important especially if you've got to break bad news sure. or perhaps just to soften a conversation that might be difficult and i think people are having to have some difficult conversations but actually uh, on a positive note people are also growing as you i was just thinking yep. about that when you mentioned growth people are definitely also um expanding yep. uh employing new people so but even so whether it's in a negative or positive we always need to be using a uh, much more polite uh softening language in order yep. to uh, get that message across I think also just as you say, you know, we've tried to give different options and different words and you apply it in the context, whether it's a formal setting, whether it's internally exactly. to your team, whether it's externally. And then likewise, I think, you know, one of the things, the benefits of studying in our group courses is you'll have participants from all over the world. So there Absolutely. are moments as well where, you know, in a particular culture or in a particular context, perhaps using uh, language and phrasing it in a certain way will help give you a better impact if you know you want to be more direct or if you want to be less direct so um yeah yeah that's all great stuff I, yeah I, I think we'll wrap it up here because <laughs> okay. we had a fairly long session but thank you so much yeah. linda for a wonderful session thank you for giving um, me the opportunity
No problem. Thank you, everybody who watched us from all over the world. We have greetings here from Manama too. So I think I feel like we've covered the whole the whole world, perhaps. Gold globe. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for your time, for joining us, for your engagement and your interaction, and and choosing to learn with us. Um, yep. We hope that we can support you in your language journey. As we said, you can visit our website for more information and contact us at clients at London School. Um, and we have a a question here from Diana saying, are you planning to do live streams even after the pandemic? We hope so because we know they've been valuable to our clients. So stay tuned. Um, subscribe to our yeah, <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll get notifications. Um, and just I could thank you very much for a very lovely message. We're very thank glad. Thank you. Um, and yes, your your name is in the lights. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is your moment. So forever, forever on screen. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Again. Stay well, um, and we keep learning English. And we'll see you next time. And safe. Stay safe. Cheers. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.